Hawaiian Holding CEO Peter Ingram joins us now in an exclusive uh, interview. Peter, very good afternoon to you. Thanks for, for joining us. Well, good afternoon to you and uh, good morning from Hawaii. I'm delighted you are in a Hawaiian shirt. I teased that you probably would have been and then I got worried that in case you in case you hadn't been. Always always the best shirts in the business when you join us. Peter, I wanted to ask uh, about this uh, this loan that you've secured today. So tell us exactly how big it is, the, the terms uh, of it and how much you needed it. Well, what uh, what we've done today, what was announced today, is the signing of a uh, a non-binding LOI. This is part of the um, the CARES Act that was passed earlier uh, this year. Hawaiian um, under the CARES Act qualifies for a three hundred and sixty-four million dollar loan, and and that is um, that is helpful access to liquidity. Um, we still have to work with the Treasury on the definitive terms, and they're going to be working with us and, and all of the other airlines who are participating in this program. And, uh, and then we have, we have the option um, through uh, the end of September to decide exactly how much we draw on that. So it, it is a good option uh, for us to have available in this, uh, this challenging and really uncertain time for our industry and for the economy generally. Um, you also mentioned, or we also mentioned, that you'll be uh, starting back uh, more of your routes in August. How little uh, or how weak has the demand been in the last couple of months, and how, how confident are you that there'll be a lot there come August? Sure. We've been in a really unique situation here in Hawaii because um, since, uh, since the end of March, we've had a quarantine, 14-day uh, quarantine for anyone who is arriving into the state. And since the beginning of April, there was a quarantine up until just recently, until June 16th, on travel within the islands. So demand for us has been incredibly uh, low through the second quarter, but really suppressed by that quarantine. Uh, the, the difference that's coming up on August 1st, I, I mentioned a moment ago that the, the quarantine for travel between the islands of the state was, was lifted on June 16th. On August 1st, what we're going to see is um, not a lifting of the quarantine, but the ability for uh, people arriving into the state if they, uh, they get a COVID-19 uh, PCR test before travel within um, you know, a certain period of time immediately before travel, they'll be able to, um, to come here and avoid the quarantine. So it really is going to open us up to demand that we haven't been able to even even have any visibility into uh, over the last uh, three months now. Yeah, Peter, this is Morgan. I, I want to go back to this deal with the Treasury uh, and, and what it potentially enables in terms of the workforce for Hawaiian. There's been a lot of focus on what will happen come the fall uh, for the major airlines, airlines like yours, uh, when it comes to potential job furloughs or job cuts and, and a mismatch between demand and the, and the ability to fly and how many pilots or how many other types of workers are, are on staff. Does this mean, does this enable you to keep your workforce in place? Well, it, it, it certainly uh, is helpful liquidity to us. I, I, I think we should separate um, this part of the CARES Act financing for airlines from the uh, the payroll support program, which was uh, a grant in our okay. case of, of $292 million. And, and that was the, um, the piece that we have been uh, receiving in tranches since uh, early April. Um, that the condition of that was that was that all the airlines would maintain their employment levels through the end of the, um, the third quarter. And of course, we're uh, we're absolutely adhering to that. What we've got to look at right now is um, what the supply and demand balance is going to be, and and can we um, sustain our business at the size we have? And, and of course, there's there's a lot of things um, pushing against that. Uh, for example, you know, even with some relaxation or some ability to avoid the quarantine coming into Hawaii, we've still got in a lot of the international places we serve quarantines in place, and I think it may be some time. Uh, before we're able to go to places like Australia and New Zealand that were uh, important parts of our network before. We're still not flying to Japan. Um, so um, we're, we're going to have to um, make some difficult choices about matching um, supply and demand, and we're going to have to make sure that, that we have our, uh, our workforce aligned with that. Uh, what we're committed mm -hmm. to, and, and I've been very um, 
you, you know, up front with our team about this is that we're going to pursue voluntary actions and things like early retirements um, before we go to any involuntary actions. But um, that doesn't uh, that doesn't mean that uh, involuntary reductions might not uh, be necessary for us. Peter, are you still committed to keeping the middle seats uh, empty? And what do you make of uh, the decision by some airlines to, to now fill those seats again? Well, I, I, I would say a couple of things about that. In, in our case, we have uh, committed to cap our load factors at, at no more than um, than 70%. And, and we're committed to that, um, you know, through uh, through the end of the summer, uh, basically, at least through the end of, of August, and we'll assess that as we, we go forward. Um, in terms of, of other airlines, you, you know, it, uh, I'm, I, I think it is worth noting that, um, that flying remains really safe. I think people are concerned about flying, um, but there are, there are lots of things about the way airlines are configured with passengers facing the same direction, with the air flowing from top to bottom, with the HEPA air filters that are in modern airplanes that makes it a, a safe environment. And so I, I think it is, um, you know, reasonable airlines can make different decisions. Given our sense of consumer sentiment right now, uh, we are we're continuing to keep the load factor caps in place. And, and that's a decision we'll continue to reassess as we go forward.